Question number 6. The circle C has equation x square plus y square plus 6x minus 4y minus 14 equals 0. Part A says find the coordinates of the center of C and the radius of the circle. Question number 6. Part A. You need to find the center and radius of the given circle. You are given a equation of a circle. So there are two methods to find the center and radius of the circle. The first one is by using the completing the square method. You change this equation into two quadratics of uh, y and y, x and y and find the center and radius. But I prefer the another method which is straightforward. You take the coefficient of x, take it as 2f which is 6, the coefficient of x. Coefficient of y, 2g, take it as 2g which is minus 4. Find f and g. Your f is 6 upon 2. Your g is minus, minus 4 upon 2. So your center, center you can straight away write minus f comma minus g. That's your center. So which is minus 3 minus or minus 2 is positive 2. This is a straightforward method. Otherwise you need to convert this equation into a quadratic equation. Now you got the center already. Do you want to find this radius? The radius is square root of f square plus g square minus c. Substitute everything here. You have f and g. Your c is the constant term. This term minus 14. So when you substitute here, you get square root of f square which is minus 3 whole square plus g square minus c is minus 14. So you get minus into minus plus 18, 27. So square root of 27 units. That's your radius. You can write it as, in, in, instead of writing this in third form, you can write it in decimal form also, 5 point, 5 point something, whatever it is. So you got the radius, the center, and the radius already. So let's say you are given the center and radius and they want you to find the equation of the circle. You can work it out backwards. Like you take the center as A and B, your radius. So the equation of the circle is X minus A whole square plus Y minus B whole square is R square. R square. Substitute A and B are in there. You got this equation already. When you substitute A, minus 3 which is x plus 3 whole square plus y minus b y minus 2 whole square is r square r is square root of 27 r square is 27 when you remove the brackets and simplify the like terms unlike terms you will get this equation of it so when i say second method this is what i was referring to you need to change this equation in this form by using by adding some constant numbers on both sides and simplifying you will get uh, this form from this equation you can form this so you can straight away write your center is if it is plus 3 take minus if it is minus take plus this is your center and your radius is whatever number you have on your right side take the square root of the number that's your radius that's all. That's your second method. This is the first method. I always prefer this one. This is straightforward. So this question has three marks. Now part B. The line with the equation y equals k where k is a constant is a tangent to the circle C. Find the possible values of k. Your part B. It says the equation y equals k is a tangent to this circle. y equals k is a tangent then find the value of k. This question has two marks on Even though the question, when you read it, it sounds complicated, confusing. But when you look at the marks, it just carries two marks only. That means you don't, you don't need much stuff to do. So how do we find k when this equation, when this equation is tangent to this circle? You need to know one thing before we solve this. Whenever you talk about a circle and a line and a line, there are three possibilities. Either the, the line touches the circle at exactly one point or 
a secant line, a line which passes through the circle or a line which never touches the circle. So there are three possibilities. When you combine them, when you substitute y equals k in here and form a quadratic equation in x and take the discriminant b square minus 4ac. For this tangent line, your b square minus 4ac will be 0. So if your discriminant is 0, that means the line is a tangent to the circle. If your discriminant is less than 0, that means there is no point which lies both on the circle and the straight line. Or in other words, the line never touches the circle at all. If your b square minus 4ac greater than 0, that means when you solve, you will get two point of intersection. That means the line crosses the circle at two points. So there are three, three cases actually. So in this case, they say that the line is a tangent to the circle. So your b square minus 4ac should be 0. So substitute y is equal y equals k in here. So you will get x square plus k square plus 6x minus 4k minus 4 minus 14 is 0. You substitute already. Form a quadratic equation. Rearrange this. x square plus 6x. The rest of the terms all constant terms. K square minus 4k minus 14 is 0. The rest of the so you got a quadratic equation already. Take the discriminant, equate it to 0. That's it. You got the solution already. So your A is coefficient of x square. B is coefficient of x. C is this. So B square minus 4AC. 6 square minus 4AC equals 0. And when you simplify this, you can get the value of k already. After this, you can just... Uh, when you simplify, it is uh, 36 square is 36 minus, so I'm going to divide everything by uh, 4. So 9 fourths are 36, 9 minus k square plus 4k plus 14 is 0. So I get k square minus 4k minus 23 is 0. So I'm going to solve this by using the formula your k will be minus b plus r minus square root of b square minus 4ac upon 2a by the formula. So you get 4 plus r minus square root of 16 plus 1892 upon 2 which is 4 plus r minus square root of 108 upon 2 or 2 plus r minus square root of square root of uh, 54 sorry not 54 I need to take out 4 outside to cancel 2 so it will be 2 4 are 8 28 7 4 are 20 so 27 is 3 times 3 times 3 so you can write it as 2 plus r minus 3 root of 3 that's the value of k. That means the, the k has two values. 2 plus 3 root 3 and 2 minus 2, 3 root. And you might be wondering why equals k is a tangent, why it has two values. When you draw this circle, the circle has a radius minus 3 comma 2, right? So let's say uh, we draw this circle. Take x coordinate minus 3, y coordinate 2. The center is here and the radius is 5 point something. So your square will, uh, your circle will be something like this, let's say. So this is the circle. When you draw this tangent y equals k, we are not sure why the k is whether positive or negative. So you will have one tangent here. Because y equals k is a line parallel to x-axis. So it can be this with some negative number or it can be this here. This is y axis. So this is also y equals k. Only thing, the, k, the value of k may vary. That's why you have two values. One, when you simplify this, you will get one positive value and one negative value. But don't worry about this. All you need to find is this k. And again, I'm wondering, 
This question has only two marks. So you don't need to do uh, much of this working. You substitute K in here, find this equation, plug in everything in your calculator, straight away you get the value of K already, just write the values. You don't need to show this working or not. But by right, you will be, you're supposed to be given three marks, minimum of three marks for this question. Part C, the line with the equation Y equals P, where P is a negative constant, is a chord of the circle C. And the length of the chord is four units. Find the value of P. This question has three marks. We need to find the value of P. If Y equals P is a chord of this circle, and the length of the chord is four units. Let's draw a rough figure. We know that the center of the circle is minus 3, 2. So when you take minus 3, 2, x axis minus 3, y 2. So this will be your center. And your radius is uh, square root of 27, which is 5 point, 5 point something. So the circle will be like something like this, let's say. We don't need the exact figure, don't worry about it. This is uh, minus 3, 2 and your radius is square root of 27. But they say y equals p is a code of this circle and p is a negative constant. It's given p is a negative constant. So it cannot be here, somewhere here. So let's say a code is here. Let's say I take this code. Okay, this is y equals p, whereas p is a negative number. And the length of this code, let's say a and b, the length of this code a, b is four units. So let me uh, let me draw, we need to find the value of P. So let me draw a perpendicular here and take it as a right angle triangle. And we know this the radius of the circle which is square root of 27. And when you draw a perpendicular line to from the center to the code, it will bisect the code. So if it is four units, this will be 2, this will be 2. That is a property actually. So when you draw a perpendicular line to uh, perpendicular line to any chord from the center, the chord will be bisected by the, uh, the normal, the perpendicular line. So the total units is 4 units, 2 and 2. So it will be 2 and 2. So consider this right angle triangle. You got 27 here, hypotenuse square root of 27, this is 2. We can find this side, this side. Okay, let's take a center at uh, C. Uh, this point as maybe D. So you can write it as CD square is hypotenuse square minus AD square, which is 27 minus 4, 23. So CD is square root of 23. It is just a Pythagoras theorem. This whole length is square root of 23. This whole length is square root of 23. Okay, now. This whole length is 23. Let's say C is here, minus 3, 2. And the whole length is square root of 23. Whole length is square root of 23. But we know this length, this little length. Because the coefficient of y is, the y coordinate is 2. That means this point is 1, 2. So this length is 2. But the whole length is square root of 20. So what do you think the balance length will be? The total 1, square root of 23, minus this length, right? So you will get the balance length, which is square root of 23, square root of 23, minus 2. If you understand what I'm talking about. This whole length is square root of 23 and this little length is 2 units. So square root of 23 minus this will give you this length, this length, which is square root of 23 minus 2. I don't care about what is the, val what are, what is the value of this. But this little length is square root of 23 minus 2. So this number will be so let's say this little length is 3. You can write this is minus 3. Correct? Because 1, 2, 3, this will be minus 3. So whatever the length, you put, a, you add a negative sign. You add a negative sign. That is P. 
that is this p. That's all. Or you can write it as 2 minus square root of 23. It's just a Pythagoras theorem only. You find the total length and you minus the top length. You got the bottom one. But if you write the bottom one as your answer, that's not your answer. Square root of 23 minus 2 is the length of this. Length usually we take the absolute value. So length is square root of 23 minus 2. So when they say P and in your question it's given very clearly P is a negative constant. So multiply by negative you get 2 minus square root of 23 that is P. Or you can simplify if you want. This question has 3 marks. Question number 7. Part A. Show that the equation 8 tan theta equals 3 cos theta can be written in the form 3 sin square theta plus 8 sin theta minus 3 equals 0. You are given 8 tan theta equals 3 cos theta. You need to show that 3 sin square theta plus 8 sin theta minus 3 is 0. And it has 3 marks. So we are going to use these trigonometric identities. By looking at this, you need to show this. This equation has no cos theta, no tan theta. So we know for sure we need to change everything to sin theta. So write this as 8 tan theta is sin theta upon cos theta equals 3 cos theta. So bring this cos theta here. We will get 8 sin theta equals 3 cos square theta. And we know there is this trigonometric identity sin square theta plus cos square theta is 1. So you can write cos square theta as 1 minus sin square theta. So your 8 sin theta is 3 into 1 minus sin square theta. And simplify this, you got this question, this equation already. So it will be 3 minus 3 sin square theta. Put everything on one side. You get 3 sin square theta plus 8 sin theta minus 3 is 0. And this is an easy 3 marks. Just replace tan by sin by cos. Bring the cos here, cos square. Apply this. You need to know these trigonometric identities. Sin square theta plus cos square theta is 1. So replace cos square by 1 minus sin square and simplify. You got the answer already. Part B. Solve the equation 8 tan 2x equals 3 cos 2x within the limit 0 to 90 degree. Give your answer in two decimal places. And it has 4 marks. Question number 7. Part B. You are given 8 tan 2x is equal to equals 3 cos 2x. You need to solve this equation within this limit and write the answer in two decimal place. You don't need to treat this as a separate equation. If you take a look at part A, you are given 8 tan x is 3 cos x and we derive 3 sin square x minus 8 sorry plus 8 sin x minus 3 equals 0 in part A. We are going to use this use this equation in here. When you compare these two, it is the same. 8 tan. In the place of x you have 2x. The rest all same. So if you derive this, if you write this as sine by cos and simplify, you will get the same equation but sine square instead of x you will get 2x. 8 sin 2x minus 3 equals 0. This will be the same equation, only thing you will have 2x here. You don't need to derive that actually. You can just take the result from part A. Now replace y equals sin 2x here. So when you substitute y equals sin 2x here, you get a quadratic equation in y. Solve this quadratic equation, you get two y values. Replace y by sin 2x again and solve it. Solve, solve by using like solving of trigonometric equations. Now here I am going to use the formula. y is minus b plus or minus square root of b square minus 4ac. c is minus 3 upon 2a. So when I simplify this, it is minus 8 plus or minus square root of 64 plus 9, uh, 3 3's are 9, 4's are 36, which is 100. Altogether is 100 by 6. 
So I get two values y is minus 8 plus or minus square root of 100 is 10 upon 6. So when you split them, you get y is minus 8 minus 10 which is minus 18 upon 6 and minus 8 minus 8 plus 10 which is 2, 2 upon 6 or 1 upon 3. You got two values already. Now the next thing, take this y, substitute here sin 2x is minus 3 and sin 2x is 1 upon 3. Solve them within this limit. So the two y values, y is minus 3 and y is 1 upon 3. But basically y is sin 2x. Sin 2x is minus 3 and sin 2x is 1 upon 3. You need to solve them separately. But look at this minus 3 in your sine curve in your sine curve right the minimum point is minus 1 maximum point is plus 1 unless like something like y equals 4 sin x then your maximum point will be 4 and minimum point will be minus 4 in the graphs and transformation we learn when in an equation f of x, if you replace x by ax, if you have an equation f of x, and if you replace x by ax, your x, your y coordinates remains the same. Your x coordinate will be divided by a. So your y coordinate is not going to change. So there is no way you are going to get 3 here. So what I am trying to say, there is no solution for this or if you don't want all this thing you just put a sign inverse of 3 in your calculator you will get error that means there is no solution so forget about this we move on to the second part you have sine uh, sine 2x equals 1 upon 3 within the limit 0 to 90 or instead of solving this you can take this 2x as y or something and since it's 2x limit uh, multiply the limit by 2 0 to 180 you can either solve this equation or solve the new equation within these two limits and change the theta back to 2x now find sine inverse of 1 upon 3 which is 19.471 your theta is 19.471 degree that's not the solution take it as a principal value and you need to find the solution within this limit draw this four quadrants ASTC and we are talking about 0 to 180 only these two quadrants only so you need to look for the quadrant where your sign is positive your sign will be positive here and here both the quadrant your sign will be positive so here the answer is theta here it will be 180 minus theta. These are all your two solutions. So your two solutions are theta is 19.471 and another one uh, theta is 180 minus this. Which is like minus, uh, sorry, 160 point five two nine. 160.5 you got two solution which is theta theta is 2x so 2x is this x will be you divide by 2 so 19.471 divide by 2 you got 9.74 in two decimal place and your second answer is x is 160.5 0.529 divided by 2 which is 80.26 so you got two solution already question number 8 an arithmetic series has first term a common difference d prove that the sum of the n terms of the series is n upon 2 into 2a plus n minus 1 into d question number 8 part 1 we need to prove that sum of the n terms of an arithmetic sequence is n upon 2 into 2a plus n minus 1 into d. We know this is the formula to find the sum of n terms of an arithmetic sequence. 
but in this case we need to prove that the formula is this using the arithmetic general arithmetic sequence okay let's say we are given the first term is a and the common difference is d so your sum of n terms will be a first term and your second term i put a bracket just to differentiate the terms and your third term a plus 2d and fourth term etc your nth term which is a plus n minus 1 into d you have n terms 1 2 3 4 etc n terms so next time what i'm going to do i'm going to flip this series flip this series i put the last term here a plus n minus 1 into d and my last two last term that means n minus 1th term will be you see here when you take a look at this your first term is the second term you have 1d third term you have 2d fourth term you have 3d that means 4 minus 1 If you take a look at tenth term, you will have nine d. So if you take a look at the nth term, n minus one d. So the previous term, that means n minus one term, will be will have a plus n minus one minus one d, which is a plus n minus two d. I'm not sure whether you understand what I'm talking about. This earlier term, n minus one term. So if you take a look at any term, this is the fourth term. Fourth term has three d. Third term has two d. That means you take any term, n minus one term, it will have n minus one minus one d, which is n minus two d, etc. I write uh, the la. This term will be here. A plus d. say this is the same series the same series with the n terms i flip the series why i am doing that just to prove that this is the formula now what i am going to what i am going to do i am going to add both the series so when i add these to sn plus sn i write it as 2sn because we don't know the value of sn and i am going to add the corresponding terms first term second term third term etc and minus 1th term And nth term. I'm going to add them. When you add them, you get two a plus a, two a, and plus n minus one into d. Plus. Let's move on to next term. A plus a. We add the like term. So a plus a, two a. You have d plus n minus two into d. You have d plus n minus two into d. When you simplify this, you get d plus n d minus two d, which is n d minus d, which is n minus one into d. So what I'm trying to say, the d plus n minus two d, you can write it as n minus one into d plus etc. That means this and this is the same. Even you add the n minus one term plus this. You will get again two a plus n minus one into d. When you add the nth term, etc., nth term a plus a two a plus n minus one into d. So what I'm trying to say here, all the terms are same. You see, first term is same as second term and third term, everything, even the nth term, all are same. So when you add n number of terms, one, two, three, four, this is the nth term. So you can write it as n into two a plus n minus one into d. That's the summation to s n. So your s n summation of n terms. You bring the two here n upon two, two a plus n minus one into d. This is how you prove this. Okay, repeat again. Take the sum of n terms. Using first term as a, a common difference as d, write the n terms and flip the series. Write the last one as a first first term, 
and n minus one term here, etc. Second term, first term, flip it. Then add the corresponding terms. When you add, you will get two a plus n. All the terms will be two a plus n minus one into d. So how many terms are here? N terms are here. N equal terms. So when you add them, you can write it as n into two a plus n minus one into d. Bring the two here. That's it. And the second part of question number eight. A sequence is given by u n is five n plus three into minus one to the power n. Find the value of u five and summation n equals one to fifty nine u n. You need to find u five. This question has only one mark, so it's easy. Substitute replace n by five here. So u five is five times five plus three into minus one to the power five. That's it. So which is twenty five. Minus one to the power odd number is minus one, so minus three, which is twenty-two. That's all. This question has one mark. The second one it has three marks. You need to find the summation of this series, u n u n, from one to fifty-nine. So when you write this u n here, it will become summation n equals one to fifty-nine. Five n plus three minus one to the power n. This is what we are going to find. You can find this all together, or you can split the series into two series. You can split it as summation five n plus summation three minus one to the power n, which is the same. Or five also a constant. You can take five out. You can write it as summation n. Here three is a constant, which is multiplied by each and every term of the series. So you can take three as a common factor, minus one to the power n. Your limit is n is equal to one to fifty nine. Fifty nine n is one. Now substitute here. N is one two three etc. So you get one plus two plus three plus etc. plus fifty nine plus three into When you substitute n one two three etc all the way until fifty nine here you get minus one to the power one, which is minus one. Then minus one to the power two, positive one. Minus one to the power three, negative one etc. Because minus one to the power even number will give you a positive one. Minus one to the power odd number is a negative one. So the last term is minus one to the power fifty nine, which is negative one. That's all. You can just find the solution here. Five into apply the formula for sum of n terms in an arithmetic sequence. You know the last term fifty nine, first term one. Common difference is one. So the formula is n upon two into a plus l. First term plus last term. That's the formula. Plus three into here you can see minus one plus one will be cancelled. The next minus one plus one will be cancelled, so all the way until minus one to the power fifty-eight, everything will be cancelled. You will be left with only minus one. So your answer is sixteen. Five times fifty-nine. Five times fifty-nine times sixty upon two minus three. Use your calculator to find this answer. You can write it as thirty here. Much easy. Eight, eight, four, seven. That's the sum of this series. Eight, eight, four, seven. And this question has three marks. Question number nine, part A. Sketch the equation y equals three times four to the power x, and show the coordinates of any point of intersection with the coordinate axis. They want you to sketch the exponential function y equals three times four to the power x. It is not three times four to the power x. These two are different. These two are different. This is three times four to the power x. So we know all the exponential function will look like this. Y equals a to the power x, and the point of intersection with the y coordinate. When you replace x by zero, it is one. Always one. Always one. This the. Uh, Exponential function for y equals a to the power x. But here again, 
if it is just 4 to the power x, if it is just 4 to the power x, this is your graph. This is your graph. But it is 3 times 4 to the, in graphs and transformation we learn, when you multiply a function by a, your all the y coordinates will be multiplied by a. So 1 times 3 will be 3. So your new graph will be something like, let's say this graph is, this your new graph will be something like, oh sorry, not 3. It will pass through, not 1, 3. Something like this. Don't worry about the the curve. Uh, actually, they need the point of intersection only. You can just draw a curve. You don't need these curves. You don't need to show them this. Just draw exponential curve. Make sure it doesn't touch the x-axis. And the point of intersection you need to show very clearly, which is 3. And always label the graph. Make it as a practice. 3, 4 to the power x. This point of intersection is very important. So this question has two marks. You need to label the graph. Uh, plot the point the point of intersection and that's all and this curve will never touch the x-axis because x-axis is the asymptote of a exponential curve so this question has two marks part b the curve with the equation y equals 6 to the power 1 minus 1 x meets the curve with the equation mentioned in part a at the point p show that the x-coordinate of p is log 2 upon log 24 to the base 10. You are given another function y equals 6 to the power 1 minus x meets the function meets the curve y equals what, 3 times 4 to the power x at the point p. You need to show that the x coordinate of the point p is this. So how do we find the point of intersection? We equate them. So you equate this and this. 6 to the power 1 minus x is 3 times 4 to the power x and find the value of x. You will get this already. This question has 5 marks. So how do we find the uh, x? x is given as an exponent. So you need to take logarithm on both sides. When you take logarithm on both sides, you can write 1 minus x log 6 to the base 10 is log of 3 times 4 to the power x. Here I am using laws of indices. When you have log a to the power b, you can write it as b log a. The base can be anything. So that's what I apply here. I write it as b log a. Log of a times b. Another laws of indices. Log of a times b, you can write it as log a plus log b. So I'm going to write it as log 3 plus log 4 to the power x. If again, 4 to the power x can be written as x log 4. So log 3 plus x log 4. Here I have, when I multiply this, I have log 6 minus x log 6. All the base... Now it looks like a linear equation. So how do we solve this? We put x all one side and the term without x all to the other side. So when you put this thing here and bring the 3 here, log 6 minus log 3 is x log 4 plus x log 6. I can take x as a common factor. Log 4 plus log 6. How you want to simplify it, it's up to you. You simplify, you get x, you'll get this equation alone. Now, log a minus log b can be written as log a upon b to the base 10. x into log a plus log b can be written as log a times b. That's all. You got the solution already because 6 upon 3 is 2. So your x is log 2 upon log 24. The base can be anything.
here it's a base 10 so just write 10 that's all just like uh, solving equations involving logarithms take log on both sides and solve it simplify it apply laws of logarithms you get it. this is an easy five more question number 10 you are given an equation equation of a curve c y equals 4x cube minus 9x plus k upon x where x is greater than 0 and the point p with x coordinate 1 upon 2 lies on c and it's a stationary point part a show that k equals minus 3 upon 2 this question has 4 marks but how do we find the stationary point you differentiate this differentiate the equation the equation of the curve and equate it to 0 because when you, when they say stationary point the gradient will be 0 so when you differentiate this dy upon dx 4x cube will become 4 into 3x square minus when you differentiate x it becomes 1 so 9 times 1 plus k upon x will become minus k upon x square when you differentiate 1 upon x you can write it as, as x to the power minus 1 and when you differentiate it becomes minus 1 x to the power minus 2 or minus 1 upon x square so you can just remember this 1 upon x when you differentiate 1 upon x it becomes minus 1 upon x square this is your dy upon dx this dy upon dx is 0 at the point p where your x coordinate is 1 by 2 so you equate it to 0 and replace x by 1 by 2, you get the value of k. So when you equate this to 0, 12 x square minus 9 minus k upon x square is 0. But at the point P, your x coordinate is 1 upon 2. So replace x by 1 upon 2, 12 times 1 upon 4 minus 9 minus k times 1 upon 2. For 1 upon 2 whole square is 0 and it's all about like changing k as a subject rearrange this so this becomes 3 3 minus 9 is minus 6 so we can write minus k upon 1 by 4 is minus 6 now bring the 1 by 4 here minus k is minus 6 into 1 upon 4 so minus minus can be cancelled k is 3 upon 2 but suppose to prove minus 3 upon 2 we miss out something let's take a look at it again uh, x square minus 9 yeah okay 3 minus 9 is minus 6 when you bring the minus 6 to the right hand side it's supposed to be positive 6 I'm sorry I made a little mistake 3 minus 9 is minus 6 when you bring the minus 6 to the right hand side it becomes positive 6 so that's it your k is minus 3 by 2 that's the problem here you see in this question the k is given so when we work out the value we can always verify our answer but let's say it's not given the question is find k I'm gonna lose one mark here because my my answer was 3 by 2 I made a little mistake here so you got to be very careful when you simplify it don't do not miss out any negative sign double check always double check so you got k is minus 3 by 2 and you scored 4 marks part b of 9 question number 9 determine the nature of the stationary point p justify your answer you need to find the nature of the point p the stationary point p when they say nature they want you to find whether it's a local maximum or local minimum uh, or point of inflection you know so this question has two marks only how do we do that we find the second derivative of the given function and substitute the x coordinate of point p x coordinate is given already which is 1 by 2 substitute there and check whether the second derivative is positive or negative for example when you differentiate this dy upon dx you get we already uh, differentiate this function in part a already so 12 x square minus 9 minus k upon x square now do not you don't need to use k because we know the value of k k is minus 3 by 2 which is what we derive in part a so you substitute k in here 
So you can write it as plus 3 upon 2x. That's your first derivative. And find the second derivative again. d square upon dy, dx square. So when you differentiate it becomes 24x. 9 constant will become 0. When you differentiate this 3 by 2 x to the power minus 2. So when you differentiate minus 2 x to the power minus 3. That's your second derivative. Uh, you want to simplify this 24x minus 3 upon x cube. Now the coefficient of point P. Coefficient of uh, the x co not the coefficient sorry x coordinate of point P is 1 upon 2. When you substitute the x coordinate of point uh, P your d square y upon dx square at the point P is 24 times 1 by 2 minus 3 times 1 by 2 whole square which is 12 here and 1 upon 8, 8 goes up minus 24. You don't need the value, all you need whether it's positive or negative. Your second derivative is negative. If the second derivative is negative, your point is there are two results. If your second derivative is positive or negative. Positive means local minimum. Negative means local maximum. You got negative. Second derivative of uh, the function is negative at the point P. So the point P is a local maximum. Part C. The curve C has another stationary point. Using algebra, find the x-coordinate of this second stationary point. This question has four marks. Now, we are not going to use this k because the k value is minus 3 upon 2. So, you write it as minus 3 upon 2. So, how do we find the stationary point? Differentiate this and equate it to 0. So, when you differentiate this, 12x square minus 9 plus 3 by 2x square is 0. 1 upon x, when you differentiate 1 upon x, it becomes minus 1 upon x square. So minus into minus plus. You equate it to 0 and you got you get the x coordinate of the stationary point. So when you equate this, you can try, multiply everything by 2x square. So 24x to the power 4 minus 18 x square plus 3 is 0. I divide by 3. 8x to the power 4 minus 9, uh, 6 x square plus 1 is 0. You can change it to another coefficient. I am going to take uh, a as x square. So convert this back to a. Convert this to a, you will get 8a square minus 6a plus 1 is 0. You can solve this quadratic equation. Find two values of a. Substitute a is equal to x square and you get the values of uh, x square. Mm -hmm. So let's do that. So when I uh, use this uh, formula, a is minus b plus r minus square root of b square minus 4 a c upon 2a which is 6 plus r minus square root of 4 8s are 32 36 minus 32 is 4 by 16 so 6 plus r minus 2 by 16 so my 2a values 1 is 6 plus 2 8 by 16 or uh, 6 minus 2 which is 4 by 16 I got two values are so replace a by x square. x square is 1 by 2. x square is 1 upon 4. So when you find x, it will be x is plus or minus 1 upon 2, 1 upon root 2. And x is plus or minus 1 upon 2. But in your question, the x is greater than 0. It's given x is greater than 0. So only take the positive values. 1 by root 2 and 1 upon 2. But in part A, we got the point P, a stationary point P, where the x coordinate is 1 by 2. So this point is given already. So the other point will be this. So they want you to find the x coordinate of the other point, which is 
x equals 1 upon root 2. Or if you want to rationalize the denominator, multiply both numerator and denominator by square root of 2. So you'll get square root of 2 upon 2. That looks weird. I'm, I'm not going to do it. Just leave it as it is. 1 upon root 2 is uh, the x-coordinate of another stationary point. 